Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 145. I'm Connor Murphy, here with Grace Matthews from Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Grace. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Good. Good. I heard you froze at the football game the other day. Oh, man, did I freeze. It was very, very cold. My toes <laughs> were in trouble. Oh, they that's were, not I could fun. feel my toes. No. And, and in fact, there was a little girl in the bathroom that they were treating for frostbite. Oh, no. And oh, the bad thing is, um, the temperature was supposed to be much higher. So uh, if you left like we did from three hours away, right. um, the missed forecast was pretty much a tragedy. Wow. Okay. That That's so, not fun when it's that cold. The Chiefs out. won. Yeah. And, and, you know, the hammer did pretty good on his picks. What did he get, three out of four? Oh, my God. Gosh, he did. He might have got four out of four. Yeah, I can't remember who he picked already. But he'll but... be back towards the end of the week. When okay. we do our show at the end of the week, he'll be back. Uh, he'll make some Super Bowl picks because the winners this weekend will be the Super Bowl teams. Right. Of course, we're hoping for the Chiefs here in Missouri, but um, I don't know. The Chiefs play in the Patriots, and the temperature is going to be about 10 degrees or less. That'll be the warm point when the game starts. It's going to go downhill from there. Uh, it's supposed to snow the day before. Those New England guys might be better acclimated than the Missouri dudes. Um, we'll see. It's going to be a heck of a game. Yeah. yeah. Here in Canada, um, nobody wants the Patriots to win. We're kind of tired of the Patriots. you know. I think a lot of people are. Yeah. They, they just want to see somebody else the there. The Chiefs are new. The Chiefs are always a good team, and then they blow it in the playoffs. Yeah, and well, like my Rough Riders did this year. Years. Yeah, <laughs> like my Rough Riders did. Ouch. Lost, yeah, in, the, ouch. Lo- lost right. in the playoffs, man. <laughs> At the beginning. <laughs> that they won. Yeah. I tell you what, though. The politics in this country are, are just getting crazy and crazy. You can't make this stuff up. No, no, you can't. Yeah, I'm thinking back that on, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look later this afternoon on the Rye Chronicles. We did an article, a kind of tongue-in-cheek article about the relationship between Trump and Putin. Right now, this was back, you know, when everybody was talking about the love fest between the two, and we did a hilarious. A um, couple of articles about that. And, um, I'm going to bring those back up because when you take, and the point of our articles was that you cannot take two men with this kind of personality. I mean, there is no psychologist in the world that agrees that Trump could be a Russian agent. <laughs> it doesn't uh... fit. I knew. I you mean, were that's say like that. saying Putin would be a American agent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Still, the New York Times reported on Friday it has not been rejected that Trump was a Russian agent, a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> so he's really in office to do the bidding right now of Russia. Right. That's how and why. They were able to spy on him. That's the the goods they sold to the courtroom to get clearance to spy on Trump I and know. Trump's campaign. Yeah. Yet, Are you kidding me? Yeah, yet somebody else sold your uranium to Russia. Hmm. Yeah, we haven't even talked about that in a while. Yeah. So who's the Russian and agent? Everybody, hmm. everybody was in on that uranium deal. I mean... Hillary was, you know, the main player. But Obama knew about it. Biden knew about it. Kerry knew about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was a, 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 a game team, a team, and this was their game. Yeah. Selling this uranium. And, and I presume for all kinds of money. 
Oh, guaranteed. 10 to 12 million. They're all deep swappers. They were very serious about this. Yeah. Well, you know, and um, after they got out of office, a lot of these people go up, um, you know, their bank accounts go up in value. Most of the small players go for 10 to 12 million. Some of the players on this uranium deal went up to like 400 million. Right. I know. You're talking big dollars. Yeah. And think about it. You know, them giving Putin our energy. Yeah. Now, what could be worse than that? What? I mean, there's not many things you could hand over to Putin that he could control us more. Yeah. He could turn them into weapons. Exactly. I mean, forget about the energy. What about the weaponry? You bet. Mm-hmm. So, the optics here are not good, but you still have these people with derangement syndrome. Oh, yeah. You've got the mainstream media media supporting their ideals. And so, there's just a great many people that don't hear anything about their Uranium One deal. Exactly. And only yeah. hear Trump is an agent. I mean... Um, apparently, a columnist at CNN has written an article, 18 Reasons Why Trump May Be a Rus- Russian Asset. Yeah. How did she find 18 reasons? Well, she looked at CNN past stories, probably, because <laughs> they're all stupid. fabricated. I mean, you, you know, I mean, if you're going to make up something, shouldn't it be believable? This is uh, 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 one of those woke things. Just put it out there and it pretend it's true and it'll be true. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's, it is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, it's, it's hilarious. Well, and you also have to think back at Trump. And I, I have to say, I never watched his reality show. I did. Um. But was there anything in his past life that made anyone believe anything but that he loved America? Exactly. Yeah. I you mean, bet. it's like when he first came down the, the escalator, you know. I was in New York right after that. and I could not believe how these people hate him in New York. Now, this was back in 2015. Right. The man is responsible for much of what Manhattan is today. I mean, he rebuilt. He brought stores in that that wouldn't be there. He, he sometimes um, helped them get financing and the money it takes to be in Manhattan. And his name at that point were on... A, Buildings around every corner. Yeah, exactly. And these people did not appreciate it. Now we have like we have the Bass Pro guy here, Johnny Morris. I beg you to find two people in this town that would talk dirt on that man. Yeah. I mean, because you know, he's brought money to this town. He's bought structures. He's brought building, you know. Um lots of other assets that we would not have. I think some of it has to do with uh, envy. And Apparently. you know what? People like to take down uh, the, the big people at the top just because they can or they love trying. Well, I remember when I, we were on a bus, somebody said something sort of positive about Trump. It was very passive. It wasn't anything political it was just sort of positive and that person was shunned and bullied the whole rest of the trip <laughs> oh no hmm. and that and that was by the people that ran the um the sightseeing tour wow were among those how ridiculous these people had derangement sim- syndrome long before hillary lost yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I don't understand it because he is definitely responsible for much of Manhattan. Well, okay, 
here's a point. Look who okay. they've th- who they've elected now in New York. Oh, Big Bird. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard she's coming out with a, a movie about growing up in New York. It's called Straight Out of Brain Cells. <laughs> Oh, oh my sorry. gosh! Sorry about that. Uh, Couldn't uh, resist. Couldn't oh resist. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wonder why they're giving her so much air time. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. You no, know, um, it, it would be hard. I couldn't believe when she was interviewed the other day that um, Anderson Cooper could keep a straight face. <laughs> he was totally stoic. Yeah, well, of course, uh, yeah. you know, you got to pr- push the propaganda of your network, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's my point. They elected her, so I don't expect much from New York. Sorry, New yeah, York. Yeah, they love her, yeah. yeah. But her math doesn't and I add love up. New York, but her... I certainly don't want to talk politics with anybody from New York. Yeah, well, she's she's blaming that er, the people are saying, look, her, her math doesn't add up, you know, for what she wants. <laughs> she just says whatever she and, wants. And she says it's because she's a woman that her math doesn't add up. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> uh-huh. Really? So. <laughs> she's the woke queen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so if you're a woman, you don't have to do mathematics that are correct or you can't do it which is I, yeah i'm not really sure what she was saying there there's there's definitely more than one meaning to that statement so well and these young millennials you know right now it's mostly women but they they've got to know that if they're going to be out in the public lie much of what they say matters <laughs> yeah you know and it will matter for years yeah, I don't think they uh, recognize that yet. No, you've got this Tamika Mallory, who is the one of the the organizers for the Women's March um, that that will take place in March. Okay. Uh, in a lot of big cities, but the idea began with marching in D.C. You know, for the rights of women and. Last year, it's where they all wore the little pussycat hats, you know, and trash Trump. Yeah. Well, this year, the powers that be outside of the march is saying, if you're Jewish, don't march. Oh. Because they're anti-Semitic. <laughs> uh, Tamika oh, wow. Mallory has aligned herself with, of all people, Louis Farrakhan. And she will not. I watched a tape. She will not denounce his anti-Semitism. She'll say things like, I don't agree with everything he says. She will. She walks all the way around it. Hmm. She will not denounce anti-Semitism. Wow. What the heck? Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm still blown away that anti-Semitism actually exists. Well, yeah. I mean... Uh, you know, statistically, 2% of the American population is Jewish. Now, Jewish, you may not be religious at all and still be Jewish and be proud to be a Jew. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a good Catholic. I'm a Catholic, but I'm not a good one. You know, I don't go around exactly. meeting people and, and one of the questions I say is, what religion are you? You know? Well, and if you see a Hispanic person, there's not a necessarily a religion attached to it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, but you have to be careful as a Jew. And I find myself to be a wimpy Jew sometimes. Um, If I see people that are bothered by the Star of David I wear, I tuck it under my shirt. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, well. But I do. What a crazy world we live in. At times. You know, and it really, that to me doesn't have that much to do with religion as much as it does. That's just who I am. I mean, you know, it it doesn't mean that I'm anti somebody else. It means that's who I am. Yet people are going crazy over these DNA tests. Yeah. But it's wrong to be who you are. You know, the mixed messages out there are just extremely ridiculous. 
Yeah. Yeah, it is. But um, definitely in the United States, the most, um, most of the victims of hate crimes are Jews. And they're only 2% of the population. Wow. I'm blown away at that. Yeah. I'm blown away at that. I don't yeah, get it. It is I don't terrible understand. in the United States. And um, I don't know. I, have you guys, do you have trouble in Canada with no. anti-Semitism? No. I've never seen it. You know, never, never heard anything about it. It just, yeah, it doesn't seem to exist here. As far as I know. Who knows in some, you know, um, some locations in the cities or something you might see it, but definitely never saw it here, ever in my life. So, yeah, I, you know, it just doesn't matter to me either. Like, I, I could care less what religion you are. I'm not yeah. going to judge you for your religion. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to judge anybody for their race either. Exactly. You know. And the people that think about that first race or religion, yeah, you know, I wonder about them. The ones that are always bringing it up, always jumping on that bandwagon. I don't even understand where it comes from. I don't either. You know, I'm just, it's like opposite of me. It's so opposite, I can't even wrap my head around it. I don't understand it. But uh, no, you, know, you act. There are so many things you're a part of that you don't know of. <laughs> well, and that people will accuse you of being a racist. Oh yeah. Well, just they have the... nothing to do with race, but they use that because it works. Yeah. Well, that's just and like we've the... got to quit letting it work. Just like the yellow vest movement, we're all being exactly. called racists and anti against anti immigration, which that's not the case at all. We're against the open border migration pact with the UN. That's what we're and, against. And a lot of taxes. Yeah. We're fed up. I mean, the United States, Canada and many places in Europe are beginning to tax and um Create, you know, like Obamacare, which was a tax. Right. They are taxing the middle class right out of society. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what's going on. And, uh, and people are fed we, up. If you study history, you know that that is the beginning of an end to all societies. Yeah. When it's, you start it, ripping away at that middle class. You're on the road to destruction. Yeah, they should really take a page out of history because there's many, many pages where kings have fallen due to high taxes and other things like that. So pitchforks are coming out, you know. People are pissed. Yeah, and you, you predicted that back in 2017. Oh, yeah. yeah and this... um, they're, they're out there right now. And... Um, the unrest is ridiculous. You bet. You bet. We've got another racist situation. Oh. Um, the Congressman Steve King from okay. the state of Iowa made some remarks, apparently back in 2013. They seemed like a little silly to me. But, um, and then to the Times last week. Now, what Mr. King said was this. White nationalists, white supremacists, Western civilization, how did the language become so offensive? Hmm. And that's now, racist? Well, you know, granted, I don't know how he doesn't understand white supremacist as a, or is a you know, heated term. Yeah. Um, but... If that's the context, I'm not really getting it. Yeah, me neither. I'm confused. But if the Republicans and Democrats alike are calling for him to be removed from the House of Representatives. <laughs> he was ripped of all of his um, duties. Wow. Uh, they're not ruling out censure or reprimand. Uh, beyond, you know, taking him off of his committees. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not anything. I, I think that 
this is political grandstanding by both sides? Yeah. I mean, what he said is kind of stupid, and why did he say it? Yeah. First of all, you know, don't utter those two phrases out of your lips. Yeah, he's he was missing the context there, which is what is confusing me because it's like part of a statement only. Well, it's really not even a statement. No, you're right. You know, it has a question mark at the end of it. Yeah. So no longer can we ask questions <laughs> or discuss not. these things. Yeah. Um, I think that our people are a little gun shy here. Yeah. Uh, this really so bothers me, and I admit, maybe there's something I don't know here. Well, probably wouldn't have happened if he was a Democrat, right? I, you know, I, I think you're right. Yeah, because they're not racist at all. No, 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 no. It's just Republicans that are racist, and Western Canadians that are part of the Yellow Vest movement. We're all racist, too, I guess. Exactly, exactly, because when you say that, you get attention. Yeah, even though I work for a black charity, apparently I'm racist, so, yeah, Yeah. I should let them know that. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Well, in a sense, they Uh, wouldn't even... um, that wouldn't affect their decision about you because they would reframe it or woke it in a way that you're working for the black charity because you are a racist. Well, all they've done is basically diluted the meaning of the word racist or racism. It doesn't mean mean anything before. Well, and we've got to quit letting it gain results. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if we can't talk about it, if we can't have an open dialogue about it, we're screwed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But. I don't know. I don't know. It makes me sad. Makes me sad, too. Yeah. William Barr. The hearings are going on as we speak. I was watching them before um, we began recording. They're much more civil than the Kavanaugh hearings, let me tell you. Um, a lot of people came out of that with a little mud on their face. Yeah. Kavanaugh hearings. They're being much nicer and well-behaved. They're still seeing some stupid stuff, but they're at least saying it in a nice way. Right. Still. Um, wow. the, the, the One of the most goofy ones was um, Senator Blumenthal. Okay. He was asking him hypothetical questions and honestly expecting an answer. (laughs) I mean, as if this man who has not yet been put in office has has read the briefings (laughs) on the Russian probe. Right. I mean, it's so ridiculous. Um. But he has his own, you know, package of lies from the past. And um, it's kind of funny because they always talk about how a liar will be the first one to yell. Yeah, a liar. <laughs> lying, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, well, I certainly fits that description. I think just about Anybody off the street could do better than Jeff Sessions. Not a big fan of him. Sorry, Jeff. Oh, no. You know, he misled everybody. Yeah. He misled the president. He misled the people. He misled the people in the in the, the committee, the judicial committee that questioned him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's really nobody. He did not pull the wool over their eyes. So yeah. he's back at home in Alabama now, and that's where he belongs. Yep. We talked about the deep swamp. He's definitely up to his uh, his knackers in that swamp. Yeah, well, he's pretty short, so it's probably up <laughs> the best. So, so, I don't know. Well, if it, was, if it was any deeper, it would have been a lake. <laughs> Absolutely. Not a swamp. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a murky lake. Yeah. Brexit. Now, you know, the people voted on Brexit. Right. Theresa May was supposed to lead them out into the direction that they wanted. She hasn't done that. She came up with a plan the other day. The plan is not what the people wanted. Uh Although, I've been told Wall Street likes it. Okay. But the Main Street in the UK does not. 
the parliament is going to vote on her plan. Ew. Okay? If they go against her plan, that probably means she's out in a few days and somebody else will come in that will either lead them out of Brexit or the people will be allowed to vote again. <laughs> vote again until we win? Keep voting? No. <laughs> um, yeah, that doesn't know, make much sense. There are a lot of countries in trouble. And we were talking about this off the air because I've been reviewing some video. In fact, um, go to shenaniganfreepress.com. we got some videos that are up there and the, We've got one up there about um, countries that can't be invaded. But tomorrow we're going to have one up there about countries that may not exist as we know it in 20 years. Now, this is not conspiracy theories. This is just based on what's going on right now. Right. And the suggestion is that the UK cannot survive this. You know, you've got the Scots that are trying to put away anyway. And, and they're not letting it go. So between the Scots wanting to pull away and the Brexit movement, um, you've got a very divided country. And um, Is Canada on that list? Canada is on a list. Yeah. And the U.S. And mostly, I think 20 years probably is a short amount of time. However, I can be very wrong because... Things are moving very, very quickly. Um, they believe that in the United States, Texas will break loose. Ooh. Which yeah. Texas is already threatened to do that. Under George W. Bush, they threaten that a lot. Well, here in Canada, um, Al- Alberta is our Texas, and they're threatening the same thing. And uh, rightly so. Uh, they're getting yeah. massively screwed by our Trudeau government. Yeah. You know, there there are issues like Iraq that needs to be, for it to exist, it needs to be divided into three countries. Yeah. You know, you got the Sunnis, the Shiites, and uh, I forgot the other ones. Uh, Kurds? Kurds, thank you. You know, instead of them fighting all the time, divide the countries up. Right. Yeah, You certainly have North Korea who... Although they have the military and the weapons, they don't have the goods to survive. Besides, I don't think Little Kim's in charge already. Yeah. I think there's already coup-like behavior going on. But without the rest of the world, they can't survive. Well, we haven't seen Little Kim in video in probably a year or close to it. He was supposed to be going last week for his birthday to uh, to China. Did, uh, or the, was there no video that showed up on that? I didn't see anything on that. You no, know, I didn't see it. But that was uh, him and his wife were supposed to be going there for his birthday. Hmm. Okay. So, but I, I, I'm like you. I didn't really see video of it. All right. And there's been a lot going on in the world, so I'm not sure Little Krim is the top of the charts right now. Yeah. Yeah, he, so. he's kind of fallen out of the news. You know. Yeah. Hasn't shot any missiles lately, so he's he's kind of, you know, yeah. sitting in the background. Yeah. Well, a new caravan left Honduras, headed for the Mexico... U.S. border. I have no idea why, because Trump isn't letting the people from the last caravan in, so I don't know what kind of communication is going on down there. I don't know who the organizers are. Is this another Soros funding funded yeah. project? Um, I would say yes. At the end of something like this, it is Soros. Yeah. Uh, but the people are I don't know. They're they're making a big mistake right now because they're going to get stuck in Tijuana or just on the other side of the border no matter where they are because we simply don't have any more space. Right. You know, yeah. we have the spaces for processing are full. Um, I, I can't imagine the condition in Honduras is going to be worse than sitting in a nasty Tijuana 
campsite. Right. Wondering if you're going to have something to eat. Well, maybe Chuck and Nancy should take some in. They've got big backyards, I'm sure, with walls around them, so they'd be nice and safe with their Heck, their backyards. Migrants. Let them take them in their house. <laughs> They're in DC anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, how come they're not giving up their house? They've got two houses, probably. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. So they can take in several. I haven't heard them taking in one. Exactly. Well, at least you we can... Nancy. We, <laughs> at least we can uh, agree that uh, they should take some in, no? Yes, we should agree. And we don't always agree, but life's a journey, and we're all in this together. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our listeners out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening, everyone.